arrangement. To talk about ten dimensions is mere sophistry. It has nothing to do with the real world because mathematicians' use of the word dimension often means degree of freedom. It's not a real world um, dimension as we understand it. And yet we are confused by it because they use the same word, but it means something different. And there's no need for any of that nonsense in uh, the electric universe. We just say the uh, world is composed, or the universe is composed, based on three dimensions and the universal ticking clock. It's very simple. When you say universal ticking clock, does that have anything to do with synchronicity? And can you explain to us what synchronicity is from your perspective? And does synchronicity belong in a paradigm about the electric universe from your perspective? Yeah, I think synchronicity, as I understand it, <clears throat> means that events uh, happen in such a way that uh, it's almost as if they're directed. You know, people come together for a reason, even though they don't understand the, the reason at the time, that kind of thing. And I think this is the law of attraction again. In other words, you are a prepared mind. Your mind is asking a question or it's looking, searching for something. And uh, the universe recognizes that and provided you're focused on it uh, sufficiently. And if somebody else is also receptive to that idea or has the answer possibly, then uh, the, the universe somehow, I don't quite know how this works because this gets down to consciousness and so on. And, which is a big question mark. But in the electric universe, because everything is connected in real time, your needs can be actually responded to subconsciously by uh, another conscious entity. And I think um, this helps me understand, for instance, uh, my course through life, because generally I've had some big question that's been a stumbling block for me. And when I get to... Uh, my, the age I am now, I can sort of connect the dots back through my life and see that things just seem to work in such a way that I met the person that had the answer. And this is, if, this is what I would call synchronicity. Uh, and in doing that, it tends to reinforce this idea that as uh, living creatures, we uh, do have this connection which is not acknowledged by uh, medicine or by bio biologists at this stage, except for a few remarkable people, like uh, Rupert Sheldrake. Right, uh, right, from England, yes. The morphogenic yes, field? Exactly, Oh, yes. wow, yeah. Uh, and the idea of morphic resonance. And also uh, the cellular biologist, Bruce Lipton, who yes. I met in uh, some years ago, and uh, we exchanged books and DVDs. Uh, his work also fits. This is all the most advanced stuff in the world you're talking about. Yes, really. I agree. This is the cutting edge of the cutting edge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is why I say that I, I'm happy that the Electric Universe cosmology can encompass all of these things and provide some framework so that you can fit them into this big picture. At present, those things are actually excluded from present science. You know, Rupert Sheldrake and Bruce Lipton uh, have great difficulty in, in being heard. Uh, they don't get any funding, and neither do I. <laughs> um, we do get some recognition from uh, members of academia, but even they have to be careful because... Uh, they have to keep their to jobs. Be... That's right. This yeah, reminds this me idea. of the climate stuff. A lot of the climatologists can't step forward and say, look, what's going on is not right. They'll lose their jobs. People lose their funding, too, for the universities, and that can't happen, uh, you know? Yeah, I think this is an indictment of the way we do science today in um, institutions, government-funded institutions. Because then it all devolves down to the crassest politics. We've got away from the um, idea of the, um, the medieval idea of the uh, scholar, the independent scholar, and you know the Renaissance scholar they've been called, who often had a benefactor who was prepared to uh, uh, provide a living for these people to pursue their ideas without interference. Correct. And uh, these days, it's very difficult to do that uh, because you're excluded uh, from uh, publication quite often. Uh, the, if you say something which goes against the, the accepted paradigm, um, you have extreme difficulties uh, in being heard. Uh, I have a friend of mine here in Australia who has shown, he's a mathematician, 
has shown the errors in black hole theory, which shows that the right at the very heart of the mathematics, there are problems. It's a bit like the schoolboy howler of dividing by zero and getting the answer infinity. And yet this is what's happened. I mean, it's quite remarkable just how silly some of these uh, mistakes have been. Um, but to, uh, for him to be heard has been extremely difficult. I mean, uh, he puts down as his occupation now, I think, a gardener, <laughs> simply because he was uh, prevented from pursuing this work. And yet it's very important. I mean, how much of our ideas are based on Einstein's work? And he has shown that, uh, you know, basically most of it is wrong. Very interesting. I think you will be inspired. I did several interviews with Gavin Menzies, who wrote the book 1421 and 1434, and mm. did massive amounts of research to find out that the Chinese were in America long before we were. Mm. And he was attacked constantly. And then seven years after his book was written, it took off. And now he has thousands of researchers all over the world bringing evidence, forensic evidence, that that's so. And, of yes. course, you can't go through peer review for this. They won't let you through. So even when we, the public, look and say, oh, such and such is a peer-reviewed article or peer-reviewed project or whatever, the reality is it's those that are guarding the gate of what is that are doing the peer review. And if you're not in yep. line with what they want, you're not getting through, period. Exactly. And I think, uh, in some respects, um, science has become unaccountable. You know, nobody's in control. Uh, the um, government people tend to uh, call on the experts, and they're always the same experts, for their views on where funding and that should go. And uh, so it just becomes a, uh, a self-fulfilling, it's a black hole, if you like, <laughs> in science. <laughs> That's the yeah. way to use it. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, sucks all the money and the uh, and all of the budding uh, geniuses, PhDs, and that into it, uh, and their work is futile. You know, I attend um, meetings here at the Research School of Astrophysics, and uh, I can't say a thing because um, it would be like talking Martian you know, to us to to um, Earthlings. It's considered a blasphemy, really. Like spiritual yeah. blasphemy. Yes, yeah. and yet I think what I have to say could actually inspire people, if young people who want to do science, if they had some idea of where the big problems lay, instead of being told, you know, we almost have it all figured out and uh, we've, we've practically seen the face of God in our equations. Uh, I mean, this is a great turnoff for uh, budding astronomers and people who, want, uh, who are asking the big questions. I think one of the exciting things about your cosmology, the electric universe, is that it's an open system. Mm. It doesn't just refer to itself. It's an open system. And it potentiates real learning, real discovery, real questions. There's yeah. no confines in there. That's, That's what's right. exciting to me about it. Yeah, it's truly interdisciplinary. You know, people pay lip service to interdisciplinary uh, work in universities at present, but none of them have any idea of what a truly interdisciplinary science really is. Can you talk to us a little bit about coherence? I have an interest in it. I don't know if you'd be interested to talk to us about this or if you want to do this on another segment, but I'm very interested in coherence because I have this sense that it's very important and we don't understand it. I've had physicists talk to me about how important coherence is, but I don't understand what they're saying. And I don't know mm -hmm. why they're saying it. Like Nassim Harriman talks about coherence. He talks about yeah. the vacuum. He talks about a lot of things. But I don't understand the part about coherence and why it's so important or what it is. Well, coherence is very important uh, because um, I suppose the best example is when, when we send spacecraft away from the Earth, they're traveling at fairly high speed and their velocity changes depending on where they are in their orbit around the sun or around another planet. And uh, to maintain communication with them, in other words, coherence, we have to keep tuning our radio receivers. You know, they, they, they twiddle the knobs on the radio receivers to change frequencies because the object is moving, it's getting Doppler effects, and the uh, radio signal is actually shifting about on the dial. Only by a small amount, but it's enough to mean that you can actually lose contact, lose connection with the thing unless you can follow it on the radio dial. Now, in my view, 
biological systems 